Hi everyone, welcome to the very first episode of Evolving. I'm your host, Presha Mehta, and you can find me on Instagram. My username is at Presha's Perspective. With that being said, I want to jump right into today's episode because I have a lot to cover. And it's actually my third time recording this introduction and possibly a good part of the episode. But it's okay because this is new to me and I'm learning and I'm going to make mistakes and that's fine. So today's topic is all about creating creating good habits and creating routines that serve you. Creating healthy routines and creating productive routines that can actually be beneficial to you, your work, your mental health, whatever it may be, right? I'm going to talk about how to create routines. I'm going to talk about my experience with ex- experimenting with routines and I'll be answering questions at the end. So let's get into it. Firstly, what do I think a routine is? I think a routine is made out of your habits. And I think the easiest way to explain what a habit would be would be through reading a little bit of the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about the stuff or the content of his book throughout this episode. So please don't mind me. I'm obsessed with him and I'm obsessed with his work. So James Cleo defines habits as essentially repeated action. And to achieve considerable change, he talks about having to change your habits. Because then each habit is building into something more meaningful than just the habit itself. It's kind of snowballing. It's like a snowball effect, right? Or like a butterfly effect. And he talks about how simple habits can shape better futures. So what I'm saying, (laughs) my point is that I think routines are made out of small habits that are repeated action. And all of these habits are things that you're comfortable with. It is in your comfort zone. It is something that you're familiar with. An example of a routine would be waking up in the morning, whenever you wake up, around a certain time for example if I don't set an alarm I'm usually up before 8 a.m and the first thing I usually do is unfortunately check my phone I either check the time or I open my dms if I'm waiting for a reply from (laughs) somebody or the other or I check instagram and I scroll through something for a little bit that is a habit I do that unconsciously I do that on autopilot because it is easy to me Because it is something that I do all the time. So my first instinct is to grab my phone and check it. So therefore, it is a routine, right? Because it's a habit. It's something that's super easy to me. Cool, I think we've made that clear. Why I think creating habits that are good for you is so important is because at the end of the day, we've already understood that habits are what make a solid routine. So good habits would be better for you. And a good habit is something that has a positive outcome on you. And a bad habit is something that has a negative impact on you. So having a routine that is majorly good habits is so much better for you, mainly because you're getting good stuff thrown back at you. Do you know what I mean? Like it's like it's like throwing a boomerang, right? You're you're throwing out good stuff and you're gonna get it back. By waking up early, okay, in my case, by waking up early, I am creating a better sleep sleep schedule for myself and that is making me feel more refreshed throughout the day. That's allowing me to work. So by giving out a good action, I'm getting it back. By sleeping late and being on my phone, um, instead of focusing on going to bed, I'm going to be tired the next day and that's going to make me frustrated. It's going to make me moody. It's going to make me all over the place. It's going to, it's just going to throw me all over the place, right? Exactly. So the first step to creating a routine, any routine, I think would just be outline what you're currently doing. This is something that James Cleo suggests in his book as well. So I'm taking it from there. Outline what you're doing right now. If I'm going to talk about my night routine, right? I usually stretch by around 6 p.m. 
then I, um, for example, make dinner. Then I sit with my mom, watch TV, talk about my day, talk to her about her day, connect with her. And then I get into my room, clean my room, do my skincare routine, brush my teeth, journal before bed, maybe read, but not so consistently, check my phone, and then go to sleep. I've listed down my habits, right? Now, once I've listed them down on a piece of paper, I'm going to write either like a plus or minus sign against each of those habits. For example, checking my phone right before I sleep is a pretty bad habit that I'm trying to break. Because if I see something upsetting, it's just going to keep me awake. If I see something funny, it's just going to play in my head and... I don't know, it's just not the best habit to see my phone as the last thing that I see before I sleep. So, that's a negative habit. But a positive habit is doing my skincare routine, right? So, once I list down the positive and negative habits, I see how much of my routine is positive and how much of my routine is negative. I can then go on to see what I can do to make changes to my negative habits in my routine. So you're already eliminating out stuff from your routine, habits from your routine that are negative, habits from your routine that are bad habits and are not serving you in a positive way. You're removing them. Why is this so important? Because you're understanding where you're at fault. I'm at fault because I'm on my phone quite a bit all day. I'm on my phone for about four to five hours a day. That's a lot. Of time to spend looking at a small screen that's a really bad habit that I have is my phone consumption like my phone usage and my content consumption I'm on Instagram quite a bit I'm scrolling quite a bit and I get lost in it and I don't realize that that's a bad habit it's not giving me anything it's not giving me anything of value it's a bad habit right By understanding this, I'm able to control myself because now I know what the problem is. So it's helped me explore what my problems are. It's helped me explore what's working for me, what's not working for me. By experimenting with creating a new list. For example, if one day I try waking up at 5 a.m. rather than 7 a.m. And I realize that, wait, when I wake up early in the morning, I actually am more focused and I'm able to get more quality work done. That's better for me. But if I realize that, no, wait, maybe waking up so early is not good for me because then I'm so drained by the end of the day and it's just, I don't feel good. I won't do that. But the point is understanding what is a positive habit for you and what is a negative habit for you. A lot of people think that doing a person's routine like for example if you google the billionaire morning routine you have this routine that is said to be done by all billionaires and they say that that's the most successful routine that you can do i'm saying that with air quotes if you try doing that and it doesn't work for you that's okay you can create your own routine and you can create your own routine by doing that exercise that i mentioned about listing your habits and seeing which are positive and negative habits Because by doing that, you're understanding what works best for you. You're understanding what helps you and what necessarily holds you down. So therefore, you're developing an idea of yourself and you're going to be able to work much more efficiently because you know what is good for you. You know what is helpful and efficient for you. I am doing online school right now. I spend most of my day in front of the screen. So I like to get all of my work done before 7 to 8 p.m. This is suitable for me because then I get at least two hours of the day where I don't check anything until I sleep. Like I check my phone before I sleep and that's it. But in those two hours, I'm occupied with my mom, with making dinner. Or if I'm at my dad's house, I'm talking to my dad and I'm connecting with my parents and my family and I'm doing something else. And for me, that's suitable. That's why I wake up early to make up for the time that I'm missing in the end of the day. So I've kind of adapted my routine based on the people that I live with, based on the people that I'm around. When my sister is in town, my sister is studying abroad in university. I love her so much. If she's listening to this, I love you. Um, 
She's in uni, but when she comes to visit, I usually don't work during my lunch hours and during my afternoon because that's when I sit and I watch something with her. I eat lunch with her, you know, because she's at home. But when she's not there, then I just continue on with my work, right? I change my routine to be more suitable to the people around me, to my circumstances, whether I'm doing online school or whether I'm doing in-person learning because then I have a change in my commute and what time I need to leave my house, if I need to leave my house at all, because that takes up a lot of time, right? If I have to um, come back and shower or anything else, right? That's why my routine has to be super adaptable to suit my circumstances. That is also a very important part of creating your own routine because you can create a routine that's suitable and personalized to you. And it's a very big part of the journey to be able to understand what works for you and what doesn't. Whew, deep breath. That was a lot of talking. Like, you know, my chest is kind of like heavy now because when you talk a lot. So yeah. What makes a balanced routine, in my opinion? I think there are four main factors to a balanced routine. And I was thinking about this earlier and I came up with this list and I thought it's good. It's a good list and I, I would love to share it with you guys. So let's begin. Um, I think the first thing that's important in a balanced routine is work or study. It depends on your circumstance. Are you a student? Are you an employee? Etc. Etc. So your work. The second thing is your hobbies. Third is rest, and fourth is control. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna break this down a little bit, right? Okay, so. The first thing is your work and it's not in an order based on, you know, most to least important. You can make that order for yourself. You can prioritize maybe your hobbies over your schoolwork or your schoolwork over your hobbies or anything, you know, based on what works for you. Firstly, I think work is a major factor of a healthy routine. Because I think humans, we need something to do. We need something satisfactory. We need to do something with our time and our mind. Which is why your work is so important. And I think having a decent amount of schoolwork or um, project work in a day is so important. Because it keeps you occupied. It makes you use your skill and apply your mind it makes you feel productive because at the end of the day you have a sense of accomplishment that you've done something with your time work is so important so for me work would be working on my content it would be studying for school for me work is editing youtube videos or now filming podcasts you know that's all work for me but for you work could be sending out emails or um, making phone calls it could be studying for school or university it could be um, teaching if you're a teacher anything you know depends on what your circumstances the second thing is hobbies which is extremely different from your work I don't think art for me is a is something I do for work it's a hobby for me right I do art because I enjoy it I do art because I want to do it So for me, I do art at least once a day. Like even if I can't do a whole artwork, I'll just pick up paints and do a little bit just to keep me happy. That's something I do for myself. And I think hobbies are so important because they help you express. It's a platform. It's a space for you to just enjoy without the pressure. It's enjoying and feeling fulfilled without any extended pressure. For me, hobbies are working out. For me, hobbies are reading. And this is all extremely important in your routine because you need stuff that you do for you and for your own personal happiness, not for an assignment or for a deadline. The fourth thing is rest. Rest is extremely important. And if you asked me this a year ago, I would have said, yeah, whatever, that, that's important. It's not, yeah, like it's not at the top of my list, but it's important. But I think it's so incredibly crucial to have rest as an included factor in your routine to ensure that it's a healthy routine. Because your body can't pour 
from an empty cup you can't pour from an empty cup you need to take time to fill your cup you need to take time to charge your battery you need to take time to let yourself breathe and rest and by rest i don't mean lying down in your bed and watching your show that could be rest playing netflix and just lying down in a dark room could be rest for some people but i highly recommend scheduling in time for yourself to just do nothing do not stimulate your mind and just sit by yourself this could be through meditation this could be through drawing or coloring or mindful practices like cooking or listening to music anything where you're not applying your mind rest your mind rest your body because that's what's going to keep you consistent because you can't keep you know using a phone that's dead you need to charge it and when you have enough battery then you can use it you know what i mean and the last thing is control i think this is one of the most important things right let me talk about it a little bit so in my own personal experience i have kind of neglected this aspect of having a healthy routine and because of that i felt like i didn't know what i was doing like i kept having to tell myself i'm waking up at 5 a.m to do this to work to get good grades to get into a good uni and i had to keep telling myself what i'm actually working towards and i was so lost because i'm like what is all of this for i could not tell myself why i was doing any of my hard work or why i was studying or why i was practicing art every day and i think having control over yourself is something that comes through journaling or through meditation in which you're really listening to your mind and allowing yourself to tell yourself that yeah i'm doing this for this reason and allowing yourself to kind of connect the dots that can be formed by each and every action so an example of this would be you're lying down in bed you're trying to sleep and you think about something like something like this like for example you think about oh i i don't know what i'm doing you know am i even working hard enough hold on to that thought put on the light write it down what are you feeling get control over what you're thinking and then if you feel like there are any changes you can make make them list down your habits again like you did when you were creating your routine and reflect reflect on what's working for you reflect on what's not working for you you get control by reflecting on your own thoughts so i think reflection and control is so important because unless you know what you're doing and what's working for you and unless you keep revising your routine you're going to be stuck in the same place because then you're going to be doing stuff only on autopilot only on in your comfort zone and you're not going to get any chance to even push yourself the slightest bit out of that comfort zone and you're not going to grow and you're going to feel lost because you're not going to see results anymore and you're going to be stuck in the same place and you're going to feel upset i think these are the four things that are so important in creating a balanced routine So when you're creating a routine make sure you're doing the following steps. Number 1, do the activity of listing down your habits and identifying them as good habits or bad habits by putting a plus or minus sign next to them. Then categorize them into the four categories that I mentioned. Work, hobbies, rest, control. Some examples of this would be work could be your school work or your um extra job that you're doing by the on the side of it or an internship your hobbies would be photography art baking reading listening to music creating music etc etc stuff you do for yourself rest would be lying down and sleeping it could be doing your skin care it could be um meditating it could be taking a nap and control would be journaling meditation self reflection of any kind it could be talking to somebody in your family or talking to somebody you feel comfortable with and somebody that helps you 
be honest with yourself about what's working and what's not working in your routine and in your life. The next thing I'm going to talk about is we've understood now what makes a balanced, like what makes, the next thing I'm going to talk about is what makes a balanced routine. We've understood now what makes a healthy routine. We've understood what factors actually make a healthy routine. But what makes a balanced routine? I think a balanced routine comes through flexibility. You don't need to always schedule in time to go and meet your friends or to go out to eat or to um, break your routine. You shouldn't be scheduling that into your routine. Like, oh, Saturday nights I have to go out. No, maybe Saturday nights you stay home and work. Maybe you have something else you want to do that is more important based on your priorities but I think what makes a balanced routine is giving yourself the space to be flexible within your routine and I think giving yourself space comes through being on the right side of a spectrum so I believe there's a spectrum you know um, based on how unbothered or how obsessed you are with your routine and when you are on the unbothered side of it you're absolutely on that side and let's take that as your left hand side right when you're on the left hand side of the scale when you're unbothered you don't follow your routine at all because it's not suitable because it's not healthy because you haven't taken time for your work or your hobbies or your rest or your control period you're just doing something that's not meant for you this could be by taking somebody else's routine and trying to adapt something that's not necessarily working for you For example, if you're trying to wake up or sleep at a certain time and you realize, no, this is not comfortable for me, it's not working for me, it's not, it doesn't have any positive impacts for me, don't do it, it's not for you, it's okay, there's nothing bad about it, it's more mature of you to say that this is not for me, that's all. And that is when you're on one side of the spectrum, when you're on the opposite side, and you're on the absolute end of the spectrum, you're too focused on your routine, you're too obsessed with it, and you're so hard on yourself about being obsessed with this routine that you literally don't let yourself do anything else except what you're always doing. This eventually is going to lead to burnout. This is going to lead to a lot of problems later on, like obsessive behavior when it comes to your routine. And I think it's so important to be on the neutral side. It's always okay to like lean into one side a little bit. Like maybe you're a little more unbothered about your routine because you're more flexible. But maybe as a person, you like a little bit more control, which is why you're leaning towards the other side, right? So I think being in the center with a little bit of bias here and there is okay. And this is what gives you balance because you're doing something that's comfortable for you, but you're giving yourself the necessary space to be flexible. And the only way you're going to realize whether you're balanced or not balanced is by reflecting, thinking about what works for you, what doesn't. And if you can't think about it, if you can't think and say that, yeah, I am a night person, so maybe staying up till 2 a.m. would be the best way to get my work done rather than waking up at 5 a.m. If you can't already think that, then try it out. Play around with your routine and experiment with a few things because the more you try it out, the more you'll know what works for you and what doesn't. All right, so moving on, what I've learned so far. Uh, I think the main thing I've learned is don't push it. There's a lot out there on the internet that can tell you that you're living your life wrong, like, Oh, you wake up so early, you probably don't have any kind of friends. No, I that's not true. Or like, oh, you sleep so late, you probably waste your entire day. That's not true either, you know, you never know. Um, or maybe it's about how many hours a day you study or how many days how many hours a day you spend on working on your hobbies. Like, oh, you only spend two hours a day studying, you probably fail. You're probably failing all your classes. No. You don't actually know that for sure. Because maybe one person prefers studying five hours a day and gets better results from that. And the other person prefers studying two hours a day and gets better results from that. It's all about the quality of your work rather than what exactly you're doing. 
Like if my quality of work is better in the afternoon, okay, I'll work in the afternoon. If it's better in the night, I'll work in the night. You want to do stuff that's giving you better quality because at the end of the day, that's what's most efficient for you. That has been the biggest lesson. Because when you don't do that, when you're not listening to your body, when you're not doing stuff that suits you, you're going to burn out because it's not meant for you consistently. It's not meant for you long term because it's not something that's suiting you, right? It's like being lactose intolerant and having milk all the time. It's not going to... It's not going to work out in your favor because it's not something that's meant for you. It's not something that you work well with or can handle. Or, yeah, like for me, I can't handle working in the night. I can't get anything done. I can't focus. And a lot of people really prefer working in the night. And I really respect that because it, for me, it's much harder to work in the night. You know, that's just my opinion. Okay. I feel like I've given enough gyan today about this topic. So let's move on to answering questions. Hold on. Hi, I'm back after a small break. And I had some water because I got a little bit out of breath. I got a little bit out of breath after talking for like 26 minutes straight. But I'm back and I'm going to start answering questions now. All right, first question. Somebody asked, how to not feel guilty after not working out for a few days because you were unwell. I completely relate to this because I am really hard on myself on the days I don't work out or I don't do something that I usually do. For example, if I don't wake up at a certain time in the day, I get so mad at myself and I feel really guilty. I think the most important thing is to remember that feeling guilty about not working out is doing more harm than actually not working out. Like, think about it. If you don't work out for one day, you're not going to lose all of your fitness journey, like your fitness progress. You're not going to go behind in your fitness journey so greatly or like so noticeably. It's just one or two days. And as long as you're not letting that become into weeks and months and yours you're fine because it's okay there are going to be a few days where you don't work out and what's going to do you more harm is pushing yourself to work out if you're unwell that's going to be bad for your health which is the core part of fitness you know your health and your body and I think the most important thing is to remember that beating yourself over not working out is worse than not working out Because you're telling your mind that it's okay to bully yourself because you didn't want to work out. Maybe it was because you're unwell. Maybe it's because you just didn't feel like it that day. Because your body was hurting or because you were sore or because you didn't sleep well last night. Because of any reason. For me, I don't let myself not work out if I'm feeling lazy. Because to me, that's not something that falls under my entire discipline motto of doing things even if I don't feel like it. But doing things because my body is telling me not to and because I'm genuinely not feeling well, that's a different story altogether. And that is when you should tell yourself that one fitness, like your fitness journey is not going to be impacted so greatly by two to seven days of no workout. You might put on a couple of grams. You might be a little rusty when you come back. But in a week of consistency, you'll be fine. You get your you get your entire rhythm back and you'll be more excited to get back into workouts than you were before you took a break. Okay. The next question is how to stick to a good routine. Like I mentioned throughout this episode, the most important thing you need to do in order to stick to a good routine is to create something that's suitable for you in terms of it being balanced to your liking, whether you like it to be more flexible or structured based on the spectrum or based on your family and your circumstances of your work and the people around you, that way you're getting time to do things away from your work and your hobbies, but doing things to rest and to journal and to self-reflect. Basically, this, this entire episode has kind of answered that question, so I'm going to move on. Okay, how to develop a habit of waking up early 
on one alarm itself okay so i think this is a really good example for something i wanted to talk about so when you're creating a habit or creating a routine you can't expect to like completely switch up your routine one day to the other right you can't be expecting to study for four hours a day when you maybe only study for 45 minutes a day right you're gonna have to progressively increase that and over time change the amount of time you study like over a period of time similarly i think the healthiest way to change your body clock and like to train yourself to wake up earlier is just to try and wake up 15 to 20 minutes earlier every day and push yourself out of bed the first thing you do when you hear alarm sit up sit up i I swear just just sit up sit up out of your bed or on your bed and you'll be fine in a minute so i think with anything just take small steps towards a bigger goal and slowly increase the intensity of it okay how to not beat yourself up for not doing everything journal about it seriously journal about it it's the same thing as the working out question right beating yourself over beating yourself up over not doing something is more harmful than not doing it at all because then you're allowing yourself to talk to yourself in a way that's not good it's not respectful and you're also just making it a lot more negative than it needs to be you can journal about it you can talk about why you didn't get it done maybe there's a problem in how you're working or maybe you just couldn't get it done because you have only 24 hours a day and out of which you should probably be sleeping for at least seven so you have a limited amount of time in your hands and it's okay if you can't get everything done and i don't either there are days and there are almost i think wait no mind sorry there's almost a couple of things every day that i don't get done i think that's with everyone you're, you're human and you have to remember that you're trying your best and journal about it don't be too hard about yourself don't be too hard about it on yourself this is something that i'm working on as well by the way okay next question i have so many questions and all of them are so good i'm so sorry ha <sighs> Okay, how to stay consistent? I think consistency comes through discipline and consistency comes through creating the routine that suits you and your circumstances and it also comes through pushing yourself to do it even when you don't want to do it. Like even when you're procrastinating, get up, splash your face with a little bit of water and tell yourself, no, I'm going to do it because I have to do it and because I get to do it and because I want to do it and because I am disciplined. That's how you stay consistent, by rising above what you feel now and what you should be doing long term. Okay, next thing. How many hours do you sleep in a day? Do you feel like sleeping more some days? 100%. I did not sleep enough last night. I got about... Five hours of sleep, roughly, with like fifteen minutes here and there, um, in which I was awake. But I do definitely feel like sleeping more some days, which is why my routine is so flexible. Some days I wake up at seven. Most days I'm up at five, but I allow myself time to sleep and regenerate, <laughs> recharge to my liking. That's okay because as long as I'm using my time when I'm awake productively, I'm fine with it. As long as I'm doing something that's good for myself, I'm okay with it. And I always catch up on my sleep during the weekends. You will never find me sleeping less than eight hours on the weekends. So I I had, um, I think last weekend on Saturday night, I slept for 10 hours because I was so, so, so exhausted. And my parents are so mean. They're not mean. They're like... They're so worried about this. They're like, you don't sleep enough. And my mom keeps telling me to sleep early. And she was so happy to hear that I slept for 10 hours. So. (laughs) Are there any apps you use for habit tracking and all? No, I don't really see the point of it. I don't like using habit tracking apps because I just think that they're kind of useless. You forget to update them. And... 
I've never really seen the point in it. I could be wrong. Maybe I'll start using it later. But I don't really like them. But maybe they could help you to stick to your routine because you know exactly what you want to do when you want to do it. So experiment, you know. What are your bad habits? My bad habits are that I'm on my phone for about four hours a day. I tend to sleep very little. I mean, not very little, but like I could be sleeping more. I tend to eat my lunch really late and ugh, that's a huge issue for me. I don't know why. Um, I tend to procrastinate on my content work until the very last minute nowadays. So I spend time in the night just putting up stories from the entire day that were ready. But I just didn't do it. And I think another bad habit of mine is skipping journaling and reading. I think that has a lot of bad impacts on me mentally because these are two things I do for my mind and for myself. How to know if you're a morning or night person? Experiment with it. Seriously, just try out both things and you'll know what works for you better. How can you be productive if it's already afternoon? I would say, because I'm such a morning person, I totally get where this is coming from. You feel like half the day is over. What's the point now? I would say just sit down and write down what you want to do and try and get as much done. And even if you don't get it done, journal. Journaling is productive. Write about why you didn't get it done. Write about what you can do better next time. And keep that in mind when you start your day the next day. Ding, 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 ding. All right, let's continue. I'm going to do a couple more questions and we're going to wind up. All right, cool, cool. This person asked me how to add something to your routine and make it a habit. Do it consistently. Even on the days you don't feel like it. For example, I have been incorporating daily journaling into my routine for the last, I think, couple of months. And there are days where I just like, I'm so exhausted. And the last thing I want to do is sit and write about my feelings and my stupid book and whatever. But... Just do it for five minutes, set a timer on your phone, do it for five minutes and go to bed. It's not about how much time you spend on something. It's mainly about you doing it in the first place and you getting it done to a good quality. So just write for five minutes about what you felt that day. Maybe it's something that's upsetting you, why you're so tired and close your book. Come back to come back to it tomorrow and do it again. And do it again and again until it becomes so ingrained into you that it's something you want to do before you sleep because it's something comforting to you. Next. Um, Okay, so this person said most of my time goes in commuting to college, which makes it difficult for me to set a routine. I would say use that commute time. I completely agree and I completely relate to this. I spend about 40 to... 50 minutes of my day usually when school is like in person in commute itself on the days where I don't have a significant amount of traffic I would say just find something productive to do while you're commuting stuff like drawing painting studying and you know uh, reading would be impossible to do while commuting but maybe listening to a podcast that is helping you learn a new language or it's a podcast that you enjoy maybe it's this podcast I don't know like finding something to do that's productive during your commute time could be incredibly helpful 
For example, during my commute time, I listen to a Spanish podcast, which helps me practice my language that I learned for school, which is Spanish. So I practice it in the car because I can leave my phone. I just need to listen to it, close my eyes, listen to it during the commute time. I don't need to do anything. Don't need to remove anything from my bag or anything. It's super easy. So try to find time like that during your commute time that you can do other things in. For example, if you like um if you like journaling and you want to do it during your commute time, you can download um apps for journaling on your phone or you could just do it in your notes app and just type it down, you know, journal on your commute ride home or call your parents, call family. That's also productive. That's also something that you would need to do to do any t- anyway with your family and uh, you'd need to like talk to your friends and family or whatever so do that you know find ways to use that time okay next up uh Okay, so the last question I'm going to answer today is something that has been asked to me quite a bit and it's a repeated question um, throughout these responses that I can see on my Instagram and I just wanted to touch up upon it before we end this episode. The question is, what is the best thing about creating habits? And a lot of people asked about why we create good habits. Okay, I'm just going to give a little bit of my gyan. Forget gyan, just like a little bit of idea. No? Yeah, okay. Alright, so the question is, what? Alright, so the question is, why do we create good habits? And what is the best thing about creating good habits? Okay, I'm going to give my last piece of gyan here and I'm going to end the podcast episode with this because it's been 42 minutes of me recording this. I think the most valuable thing of creating good habits is that at the end of the day, when you do them consistently and when you force yourself to make them something like a habit, like for example, when you pick up something like reading and you force yourself to read at least five pages a day, it becomes a habit. That habit then becomes something you do every single day and that becomes your routine, right? So creating good habits at the end of the day creates a solid routine. And I'm telling you, with a good routine, with habits you're proud of, with habits that make you feel good and have positive repercussions on you, like for example, doing something bad for yourself, like maybe scrolling through your phone for like eight hours a day, you're going to feel bad doing it. You're going to feel really bad doing it. And the thing with good habits is that it makes you feel fulfilled. It makes you feel productive and it makes you feel useful and it makes you feel powerful. It helps you feel more confident. And it also just helps you make something of yourself at the end of the day and learn more and grow more as a person it helps you challenge yourself and make sure you're not always staying in your bubble i think that's the most valuable thing that can come out of creating good habits i am extremely tired right now like my chest is heavy this was extremely tiring for me so i'm gonna go and i'm so happy that i recorded my first episode here's to many more to come i really hope you enjoyed this episode If you did, make sure you leave a review. Please, 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 please leave a review. Um, 
it would really make my day and it would it would be something that would really help me grow as a new podcast podcaster podcast host right um yeah okay please please re- leave a review my dms are always open on instagram i have started replying to all of my dms so if you ever need anything you can always message me there and we could chat so yeah that's pretty much it for today thank you so much for listening in and i will see you next week to talk about our newest topic and the hint for the topic is life updates so i'll be giving you probably some life updates so keep that in mind okay cool i'm going to see y'all next week bye thank you Okay, that was it for this episode. Thank you so much for listening. If you're still here, I really appreciate it and I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please, 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 please leave a review for me um wherever you're listening to this. I would appreciate it so much if you do leave a review. Maybe just comment an emoji, maybe write a little something. It really helps me grow as a new podcast and it helps me know what you guys like and what you don't like and i think it's just please 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 leave a review anyway um that's about it for today i'm going to give you a little hint for what we're going to be talking about next week and i will see you then so the the whatever what do you call it the hint for next week is talking about outgrowing things and getting back on track okay that's all uh thank you for listening and i hope to see you again soon bye <laughs>